and the officer news. Martin Rogers is to pull out of the administration at Peterborough and leaves David Hawkins in charge. Rogers will only act as a temporary advisor. And Wimbledon's Todd Wiltshire, who recently took the silver helmet from longtime holder Andy Galvin, has broken his scathe for it whilst guesting for Ipswich against Cradley Heath. And Barry Briggs is inviting some very young riders to the Golden Greats meeting. There'll be Martin Dugard, Mark Laram, Chris Louie and Peter Narlin. Well, our next piece of action comes from Middlesbrough. It's the fourth test in the National League versus Sweden series. Well, so far, Sweden have dominated the series 3-0. And that's no surprise because Per Jonsson has been on top form as usual. And Tony Olsen has really excelled himself. Top scoring with 13 points in the first test match. And watch for Krista Carlson, not only in this meeting, but in the future. And another rider whose future is looking bright is Peter Narlin. Peter, you're becoming quite famous. You're now the world junior champion. Tell us about that championship. Oh, it was, it was my day, yes. Everything was just great and was the biggest day in my life. Now, of course, uh, since then, you've um, got a first meeting appearance for Swindon coming up, haven't you? Yeah. I, I really had a contract ready before the World Final, but the, after the World Final it was even better, but easier to have the work permit ready. Now you're going to be racing for Swindon for the rest of the season, and, and what about next season? I'm going to ride for the rest of the season, but I hope I can do so well under this season, so I, they won't want to have me next year. Is that going to fit in all right with your commitments to Smyrdena? Yeah, I think so, because we have the home meetings in Sweden on Tuesdays. We don't have any meetings here in England on Tuesdays. Now these, uh, these matches that you've had against the National League Select, I don't think we thought Sweden were going to be dominating like they are, but you've done very, very well. Yeah, for me and the team have gone really, really well. And, uh, but we, had, we knew it should be like this, and almost like this. But to be fair, I mean, the National League have only got National League riders Whereas in the Sweden side, you have had the help from Jimmy Nielsen and Per Jonsson, of course. Yeah, that, that helps a lot, really. What about tonight? Oh, it's going to be tough, really. It's a quite short track and there's a lot of grip in it. It doesn't suit the Swedes. Well, we'll have to see who wins, won't we? Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. The National League side for this fourth test match looked pretty impressive. There's Edinburgh's Les Collins, a former world number two who can still mix it with the best. And the ever controversial Nigel Crabtree, Stokes popular rider. And Mark Courtney, talking team tactics here with Louis Carr. But before the action gets underway, let's have a few words with Middlesbrough's own Martin Dixon. Martin, it was a disastrous start for the season for you, wasn't it? Yeah, um, well I didn't start at all. I. Uh, crashed on practice day and broke my arm and my wrist and uh, you know, kept me out two and a half months. Not been back long either, have you? Uh, about five weeks, but we've had a lot of rain off it in that time as well. I haven't done a lot of meetings really yet. Now you're against uh, Sweden tonight and they're pretty strong. I mean, they've, they've had every uh, National League select they've met so far, they've beaten. And what about the team that's been picked tonight for the National League? Do you think you can beat them? Um, well, I, I don't suppose any of the Swedes have rode around here. I don't know whether that will make any difference, but uh, I think we're as strong as what the teams have been in the other matches. Um, you know, it's going to be close. It's going to be a home track advantage for you, but just now you looked at the track and went, ugh. <laughs> well, I haven't really had a look. After the first time, I just walked out here and, uh, you know, 10 o'clock this morning, it was still torrential rain because I only live you know, local, and um, at that time it didn't look like there'd be any possibility of it being on, but it hasn't been a bad day after that, dried up, and, uh, it, you know, we, we're lucky to be running at all, really. So it's going to be literally the best team who wins, isn't it? Well, I hope so. I hope we're the best team. We wish you all the best of British, anyway. Well, we're going to need it, I think. Sweden took the first heat with a 4-2 and looked on course to take a 5-1 in heat two. But Peter Narlin appeared to lose control, and he fell. In heats three and four, Sweden took the advantage 5-1, and Krista Carlson broke the track record. We join the action now at heat six. Sweden 24, the National League 12. Commentator, 
John Chaplin. Well, the National League are 14 points down now. They come to heat six. And no doubt, National League team manager Tim Swales, who's uh, the Middlesbrough boss here, will be urging his rider, Mark Courtney, in the red helmet, to put it about a bit, and that's just what he does. The elbows went in there very viciously, didn't they? And uh, Mark Courtney and Louis Carr in the blue helmet are up front, having disposed of Roland Dano and uh, Connick Yvaston very comprehensively on that first turn. But you can see it's Yvaston who's, who's making a very spirited challenge there to Louis Carr. Louis Carr has gone right out to the fence, and I wonder why that was, because Tactically, he should have closed the line right down, and he didn't at all. You can see there that Ivarsen is in trouble also on the outside of that first turn. They're very tight bends here, and if you're, you're not careful, you can get caught out. There's obviously both of them have been there, but Ivarsen was able to uh, recover quite comprehensively. So, from a 5-1 winning situation, the National League is now in a 4-2 winning situ situation, which is something at least because the Swedes have up until this point been running away with it there it is Courtney wins it Ivarsen second Heat 7 saw some magnificent team riding by the Swedes whilst in Heat 8 Mark Courtney was in outstanding form everybody concentrating the Swedes are noticeably sharper away from the gate and, the, and that is the difference between this class of racing and the British League uh, top international stars is the swiftness away from the gate, although Mark Courtney is in the lead right now, and uh, Jonsson, Olsen, rather, in the white helmet. He's going to have his work cut out to get up to him. There's quite a considerable gap. Can Olsen make up the space that he seems to be trying very, very hard, bringing the tight round on the line there, to move up on Courtney to try and find a space where he can poke his wheel through to take the lead. They certainly don't give up, even though they're 16 points in the lead, the Swedes are certainly not lying back and saying, well, OK, let's give Courtney a go. Olsen wants that lead, and he's still trying to make up ground on him. But it does seem that local track advantage maybe has come to Courtney's advantage here. And he's getting it really sideways there on the last turn. He's going to take the check flag to win it for the National League. Olsen is second, and it was Nile in third. Mike, just equal to your old track record. It's going well for you, at least. Yeah, tonight I seem to be the only one who was going any good for the English boys, but the thing is, these lot are so good off the start. That's the difference, you know. I noticed in the last couple of your races that you've really given it something at, out the start and into the first turn. Do you think this is a lesson that the others have got to do? The thing is, the starting procedure is a lot different from what we're all used to at the moment, because um, it's the green light, and then it's more or less the tapes are going fairly quick before you're looking down, but... You know, that's one of the... I think it's more if the English boys do make a start on some of these. They will beat them, you know, so... What do you think is going to happen during the interval? Do you think they're all going to have a team talk? And do you think it's going to get any better? Or do you think this is what's going to happen now for the rest of the meeting? The Swedes are once again just going to dominate. I think maybe it would be a good idea to try some of the English reserves, you know, and see if they're going to go any better or at least give them a bit of experience. Chris, you broke the track record in Heat 4. How are you getting on with these British National League tracks? Because you seem to be doing very good tonight. Yes, I think it's good track here tonight and uh, very grippy. <laughs> what about the other tracks you've ridden at? Pardon? What about the other English tracks you've ridden at while you've been over here? Oh, it's only the second match I ride tonight because I was reserved yesterday and I was reserved the first in Mildenhall. How do you think... Uh, the National League is in comparison to the to the, the Swedish League, the level of racing there. Do you think it's the same or? No, I think they're all a little bit better <laughs> here on the Swedish team. We start the second half, heat 10, with the National League 20 points down. And uh, the Swedes, quite confident here, bringing in Bo Aron and Nicholas Carlson, their reserves, in place of Per Jonsson and Krista Carlson there. The two Carlsons are not related, and in fact their names are spelled differently, but against them is Mark Courtney, who's dropped only one point so far, the best of the National League, dropped a point in the opening race to three yards, and he hasn't got it to contend with this time, he's in the red helmet, lifts at the start, and Louis Carr 
in the blue helmet has all the advantage here coming out ahead he's looking for his partner but in doing so he's been overtaken by Aaron by Bo Aaron who's one of the most promising of the Swedes younger men he's a, he's a reserve for the series but uh, he's looking extremely good isn't he and now he's been joined by his partner Nicholas Carlson up front and there's quite a bit of traffic around here look at Courtney boring in putting pressure on Carlson there to ease his way through to second place where he can get a chance to have a go at Aaron who uh, who bobbled a little bit on the apex of that turn there but he didn't throw him he kept the bike tight there and didn't give Courtney any chance to get past him Courtney swiftly ran the outside there a brilliant overtake when all else fails take a big handful of throttle and move to the outside and that's exactly what he did not wasting time trying to bore holes through on the inside he took uh, his chances on the outside Aaron probably was expecting a chance to come on the inside and there it is a win for Courtney second Aaron a very spirited ride there from the young Swedish reserve Carson third a 3-3 a shared heat making the scores now National League 20 and Sweden 40 P12 and it's Nigel Crattery and Martin Dixon in red and blue for the National League against Roland Dano and Connie Gervarsson Gervarsson a qualifier for the Intercontinental Final on his home track in Orlando in Sweden later on and uh, last time out the corresponding heat in the first half Crattery and Dixon were on the end of a 5-1 against the Swedes what can they do to reverse it this time and, in, and the, the National League badly need the point Crabtree forging ahead there in the red helmet around the outside he probably saw Courtney do it and Dixon barging his way through a few goggles flying around there giving no quarter there Evarsen got no change out of Dixon there though he's coming back at him Dixon knows must know he's on his outside giving him no chance taking him into the corner rather too quickly there although going past it himself and leaving again on the side but now the two national league riders seem to have this one sewn up and it's going to be something of a success they're going to have to wait all this time for a maximum heat win but it looks as they're going to pull it off at last Crabtree enters the last lap followed by Dixon getting back on form now after a very nasty injury at the beginning of the season which uh, cut down his scoring considerably and didn't do Middlesbrough any good either here they come off the turn a bit of a celebration really by Dixon there to make it a 5-1 for the National League Connie Ivarsson was third and the progressive scores now a bit more respectably so National League 28 and Sweden 44 P15 now and this Mark Courtney in red Graham Jones comes in in blue in place of Louis Carr who let's face it has been having a most unhappy evening in Sweden Roland Dano it is in white and Connie Ivarsson in a yellow and black helmet Swedes off the ridge one and three but Ivarsson got boxed out going into that turn but not Dano Dano way out ahead now and Courtney coming through there taking his opportunity to really challenge Dano and we'll see he's only got one point he won't want to be beaten now by Dano this very young and stylish spectacular looking Swede he's going to challenge all he can to pull back and try and get into the lead here to keep that sequence for the National League. A great battle going on up front. Dano, he looks as though he's leaving holes, but he isn't really because he's uh, he's taking the centre track where there's a bit of a cushion and there's drive. And Courtney, he's trying to get through on the inside but not having much success. Now he's switched more to the outside now where he thinks he might find a bit of speed, but Dano is he's riding tactically excellently he's he's moving inside and outside and moving into the path that courtney wants to go taking the line when you're in the lead you can take him on and he wins it a win there from roland dano second a good battle from mark courtney third was the graham jones and that's a three three so a convincing win there for sweden which now means that they won